Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers probable cause, taser protocols, and lawful orders and comes to us from Kelly's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Let's dive right in and audit the interaction. On the night of February 19th, 2018, Aurora resident Darshan Kelly was having a conversation with his cousin on the outskirts of a nearby apartment complex where he was contacted contacted by several officers of the Aurora Police Department. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down, please. For what? No, I know my rights. For what? In the 1981 case of Michigan v. Summers, the Supreme Court held that probable cause inherently carries with it the limited authority to detain the occupants of a premises while a proper search is conducted. This ruling essentially authorized police to detain nearby citizens wherever a crime had occurred until their innocence or involvement was proven or disproven. In 2013, the Supreme Court amended the Summers ruling in the case of Bailey v. United States by declaring a detention is limited to the immediate vicinity of the premises to be searched and does not apply when a recent occupant of the premises was detained at a point beyond reasonable understanding of the immediate vicinity of the premises in question. This ruling established a limit on what officers could classify as the immediate vicinity. The officers engaging Mr. Kelly are responding to a call about a gun being pulled on a minor somewhere in the nearby apartment complex. The officers had absolutely no description of the suspect and only stopped Mr. Kelly because he was in an area near the complex. Unbeknownst to the officers, the man standing next to Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly's cousin, Izier, was involved in the original incident which prompted the 911 call. But the information that the officers were basing their investigation on was a far stretch from what actually happened. Here is a clip from the aftermath of this incident which demonstrates the degree to which these officers were misinformed and disorganized. Um, so basically, the story they gave us was. You believe that, that? Which who is that? I don't know his name, but that's his mom's that's, one. That's in his there. son. Okay. Yeah. So that's Izier. Basically, okay. what happened was mom gets a cramp in her leg, shit in the couch. Husband Darrell. The one that's in the ambulance? Yeah. Yes. So that is husband. Yeah, that's husband Darrell. Okay. Uh, he goes. He kind of grabs her. He's like, "Get your ass up. Get outside. Get some air. You know, if you're cramping up, go get some air." And he took exception to that. Okay. It's like the talk to my mom that way. Okay. Shoves them. They start getting to like a wrestling match. Kind of push a TV back, no damage to the TV. Okay. They come out here and start doing whatever they're doing. Mom didn't see what happened after they left the apartment. Okay. Was there any allegations of a gun being pulled on anybody? No. She goes, there's no guns. I don't know what the f they're talking about. It is unclear how a domestic dispute was misconstrued as a child being held at gunpoint, but the officers didn't bother to make contact with the original 911 caller until this entire incident had transpired and Mr. Kelly had been detained with no evidence. I'm asking you to for that. what? Please turn My off. hands are just, in the just air. Just listen. Officer, I understand that. So I'm Please asking. To my Put your hands in the air, man. What? Put your hands in the air. There for you go. What? There you go. Turn for what? Turn you don't have a weapon. Do not double tase him. Put your hands on your head. Interlace your fingers. Are we being detained? Now! Yes. yes, you're being detained. In the 1973 New York case of People v. Jennings, the court flatly rejected the notion that lawful means any order that does not require the operator to break the law. The court noted that accepting such a definition would subject the passing motorist to the slightest whim of the empowered officer. However, the court went on to adopt the equally ambiguous ideology that an order is lawful when it is, quote, reasonably designed to achieve its goal. The the court did not elaborate as to what constitutes a legitimate goal and ultimately failed to establish a concrete precedent regarding lawful orders. The vagueness of this ruling left the limitations of a lawful order undefined and blurs the line between officer safety and personal liberty. If we break down the etymology of the phrase lawful order, a logical definition arises. The definition of lawful is conforming to, permitted by, or recognized by laws or rules. And the 
the definition of order is an authoritative command, direction, or instruction. If we combine these two words into a phrase, the meaning becomes clear. A lawful order is an authoritative command, direction, or instruction which is conforming to, permitted by, or recognized by laws or rules. Although the court never recognized the plain meaning of the phrase, common sense and basic logic suggests that a lawful order must be supported by a law in some capacity. Considering that these officers had no reasonable suspicion or probable cause to believe that Mr. Kelly was involved in criminal activity, their orders were not based on any law or ordinance and therefore were not lawful. At this point, they were just orders that were being issued from one party to another. The power of those orders were solely derived from the officer's ability to force compliance and Mr. Kelly's powerlessness to defy them. For what? Interlace your fingers on the back of your head. For what? Two, and what are we being we'll detained for? Answer my question, officer. No, we're not I know my here. right. Page 8 of the Aurora Police Department Directives Manual's chapter on the use of deadly and potentially deadly force clearly states that a taser should not be deployed or displayed with the sole intent of coercing or intimidating an individual or in a location where a fall may cause substantial injury or death. Mr. Kelly was tased while standing on a curb with his back to the ledge of the curb. After being tased, his body immediately seized and he fell straight back, smashing his his head on the concrete. The directives manual goes on to note that certified members should not deploy a taser when the subject is only passively resisting. Mr. Kelly never made any threatening gestures or displayed any physical show of force and kept his hands in the air in an effort to actively demonstrate that he was not a threat in any way. Mr. Kelly's actions are a quintessential example of passive resistance and these officers failed to follow their own department's protocol on many fronts. It's called failing to obey a lawful order. What That's, are we being detained I, for? You're going to jail for failing to obey a lawful for order. For what? Failing to obey a lawful Which order. Means what? I don't know. To sit down, put your hands up, turn I told around. You I have a pulled groin. I don't care. L lawful order, you do what you're told. If I can't sit, then what? Then you could lay down. Well, I want to talk to uh, your supervisor. Your that boss. was a supervisor. I want to talk to his boss. Well, the chief isn't I didn't here. I do anything, and there are witnesses. Yes. Hey, look right here. It's all on video, sweetheart. Yeah, he's in there. And you tased me because I asked you what we were being detained for. Here's here's the deal. We don't have to do, we don't have to explain it to you. Right. We're officers of the law. We know our rights. We don't have to explain it to you until we get things under control. That's what it comes down to. You you are. That is my superior right there. Well, you'll have to wait. They don't come out to the scene. Okay. If you have a complaint, you can take it up later. You tased me because I asked you what I was being detained for. We don't have time to explain things until we get it under control. Once we know things are safe for us to explain things, then we would have explained it to you. But when you don't listen and you're being uncooperative, I asked you what we were being detained I, I'm for. very clear on what you were asking. But you got to understand when we're dealing with somebody that possibly may be armed, we don't have time to explain it. Mr. Kelly was arrested, charged with disorderly conduct, and taken to jail, where he spent three days before being allowed to post bail. Lawyers from the American Civil Liberties Union of Colorado successfully defended Mr. Kelly in his subsequent criminal case, winning dismissal after filing a motion arguing that the unlawful street detention violated the Fourth Amendment. The Internal Affairs Division of the Aurora Police Department and a purportedly independent Internal Review Board, which focuses on cases of significant community interest reviewed the incident and determined that the use of force against Kelly was quote, reasonable, appropriate, and within policy. The Internal Review Board concluded that nothing in the incident quote, warrants further investigation. Mr. Kelly went on to file a lawsuit against the City of Aurora and the Aurora Police Department which eventually resulted in a $110,000 settlement and the city's refusal to admit wrongdoing. Aurora City Attorney Mike Hyman said that the city he settled so that it wouldn't have to spend even more taxpayer money on a court case and characterized Mr. Kelly's case as an attack on the Aurora Police Department.
Overall, the Aurora Police Department gets an F for recklessly deploying a taser, failing to execute any measure of de-escalation techniques, and refusing to acknowledge any wrongdoing in the face of blatant policy violations. This interaction and the Aurora PD's subsequent conduct are a testament to the department's inability to police itself. If an organization can write its own rules and then choose to break them without repercussions, then it is difficult to classify that organization as a public entity. Aurora's independent review board, which consists of both civilians and officers, failed the citizens of Aurora by allowing the department to openly violate its own policy. It is likely that the independent review board is easily corruptible and serves as nothing more than a mouthpiece for the police department. It is difficult to insulate an independent review board from the influence of police departments, and until a truly autonomous review board can be assembled, Aurora and cities like it will continue to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars per year protecting highly expendable personnel that offer nothing to their community. Mr. Kelly gets an A for refusing to bow to the unlawful orders of the Aurora PD and following up this encounter with legal action. The reason Mr. Kelly was tased and arrested was because he demanded to know why he was being ordered to submit to the officers. Blind compliance is a forfeit of liberty and goes against the very fabric of the American belief system. America's constitution and political system were designed to prevent incidents like this from occurring, and Mr. Kelly's encounter is a slippery slope that leads further and further away from the fundamental values that this country was built upon. What was once considered a great land of liberty and freedom is slowly becoming a victim to the regulating powers originally designated as protectors of said freedom. Mr. Kelly's legal action offers a small push in the other direction and reaffirms the individual liberties that Americans pride themselves on. With enough small shoves of financial recompense and policy policy revision, American citizens can shift the balance of power back in favor of the public and not the regulating authorities. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.